Hi everyone! Welcome to Just Stripper Things. I am the artist formerly known as Sasha Sexiana and uh, today we'll be talking about business as unusual. What happens when uh, your body is your commodity and maybe you can see this. My Black Panther shirt! Isn't it awesome? Yeah! I'm very happy with it. I had a really awful week last week. So this is actually like my third or fourth attempt at filming this video because I tried to do it last week, but I was just not in the right headspace and uh, I went and did some retail therapy. So two Black Panther shirts and one Nine Nails shirt later, here I am. All right, so business, business, business. I am not wearing my business socks because I don't like wearing socks around the house. I'm kind of excited that it's getting warm because then I don't have to wear socks ever, which is nice. Down with socks. All right, so I kind of talked about how booking works before. I'll be talking about that a little bit more in depth. Basically, how it works is you are going through an agency. When I was dancing, there were three agencies basically that operated within BC. I, at points during my career, worked with all three of them to varying amounts of success. Uh, some were a little bit better about having your back, but none were perfect, and none always had your back. They eventually would let you down one way or another. The funny thing about one of the agencies that I worked with uh, for the longest was that um, no matter what their office setup was, one of the agents always had to have his own office. So when everybody else was kind of in this open concept thing and you know one agent's here and there's a desk here and they can talk amongst themselves and another agent is here, the one agent had to have his own office with a door because he would uh, deal with the difficult accounts, so to speak. And he had to have a door because he would yell. <laughs> so I always thought that was kind of funny. In that agency in particular, which is the one that I had the most experience with and that I kind of got to know the agents more and I ended up befriending one of the like founding father people of the agency. <laughs> and chatted with him a lot about the business and stuff like that and he kind of let some things slip. Basically the way it worked was like one agent was in charge of these clubs, these clubs, these clubs, plus booking duos, and one of the agents was in charge of, you know, these clubs, these clubs, these clubs, plus all the rookies, plus the rookie contests. So that's kind of how the division of labor went. Bookings could be anywhere from a week by week basis or you could book ahead quite a bit to make sure that you had a spot on this lineup, that you got into this club that you wanted to get into, yada yada yada. Things could change last minute. You could get bumped off a lineup for whatever reason. A lot of times you'd get bumped and you had no idea why, and sometimes it was the agency's decision and sometimes it would be the club manager's decision. Some of the club managers had very different ideas of what they wanted than what the agency wanted. Now as for what the agency wants, I am still convinced that the overall opinion of agents is kind of like Vince McMahon from WE. They're very set in this one idea of what they think the customer wants and the customer is this one cohesive being who only wants one thing and apparently that one thing is predominantly blonde, uh, hopefully large chested and definitely not with too much body fat. As for whether that is a healthy amount of body fat for the individual to have or not, that often doesn't really factor into the equation. There was one club manager in particular who, shall we say, had very exacting standards on women's bodies. He, um, at one point, I don't know if he bumped her off the lineup or just refused to book her, but he 
told the agency that he didn't want a particular dancer who was a feature and she was amazing and what the fuck <laughs> because he said she's fat no 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 honey she has curves she has hips she has thighs not that fat is bad per se but in that industry it may as well have been spelt with another T because it was a four letter word like that could seal your fucking doom if you were perceived as fat that really limited the bookings that you could get and really ridiculous things limited the bookings you could get best friend and I we initially had problems getting booked together because even though we look very different we were considered basically the same Alternative, brunette, natural breasts. We already have enough brunettes on the lineup. We would hear that a lot at first. And then we both ended up dyeing our hair blonde and we had no problem getting booked together. Never did we hear we uh, have enough blondes because that's the idea. Oh yeah, long hair because men like long hair. Men are only capable of liking one thing, right? That's how that works, right? <laughs> Okay. The agent that I had become friends with uh, once bragged to me about how he made another dancer cry. He had harassed her over her weight, over the loose skin she had from recent weight loss. At the time, I still resented her over personal issues between the two of us. There was, there was some heavy shit, and I laughed along with him. It is something that I will be ashamed of, probably for the rest of my life. It was uh, not a good moment. It, it was very wrong. But this same agent uh, would often tell me that I was too smart for this business. As if there weren't so many intelligent, resourceful, creative, capable, strong, amazing fucking women in that industry that he had the privilege to talk to like every goddamn week. So he should have known better. I mean, honestly, this whole putting other women down to lift up the one, you can see right through that, you know? Because uh, how are you putting me down when you're done with me? When we're not friends anymore? Unfortunately, I did find out. Anyways, the business, it basically taught me my first steps of baby feminism. It taught me solidarity with my fellow women. It taught me the strength of sisterhood and standing together. And you know what? We deserve better than that. A friend of mine deserved better than to be told she couldn't get a booking unless she lost 10 pounds in a week. Do you want eating disorders? Because that's how you get eating disorders. She deserved better. She looked amazing and the agency really should have stood up for her, not stomped her down. When that manager at that club said that future dancer that I was friends with was too fat, he should have been reamed the fuck out and blasted for being such an ugly motherfucker inside and out. She shouldn't have been told of his disgusting comment. It should have been handled. Sometimes the agents would have our backs and it was fantastic when they did. When they didn't, it could get really nasty and it would have devastating consequences. To this day, I know I'm not the only one who carries around that expectation, the body image, that pressure <laughs> around in the back of my head constantly. You know, I'm 37. My metabolism has been going downhill since I basically hit my 30s. So I have gained weight and I have had far too many moments of tearing myself down over it. Way too many moments of hating my body for it. Because when you're in industries where your body is your commodity, your body is your product, and there are so many expectations of what your body should look like, how it should perform, what it has to be capable of doing, that sticks. And that can really harm us. Another thing that stuck with me and it was one of those things where the pieces all kind of fit together into a really sickening realization after the fact. As I previously discussed, my mom passed away while I was dancing and I had to take some time off to deal with things, to um, clear out the uh, hospice room where she was staying, to clear out our old townhouse, to 
make arrangements to go to the funeral home, all that stupid shit. But because I wasn't planning on taking a week off, it came on, I mean, it didn't really come out of nowhere, but it felt like it did. Even though I knew she, she was gonna pass away, there's no way to brace yourself for that, really. Like, <laughs> I wasn't prepared. <laughs> there's, there's just no way to prepare for that. So, I ended up being stuck. And I had to call the agency and do one of the rookie contests just for a little extra money to fucking live. And um, the actual contest itself was actually a lot of fun. That was at the Barnett, which has been a vacant lot for like over a decade, which pretty much bothers us every time we drive by it. So the contest at the Barnett, how it used to go was you would do the first round in your street clothes and you would do the second round in your costume. Well, <laughs> I was prepared for that. So I honestly can't recall if I was wearing my Metallica like flame skull shirt thing or if it was just a black tank top, but I know I was wearing khaki green cutoff cargo pants and army boots <laughs> with a spiked belt. And uh, for some reason they had decided that they were gonna stop the first round of street clothes. And I went up to the DJ and I'm like, dude, no, please, can I still do it in street clothes? And he's just like, well, I think you look great. It would be totally cool with me if you went up there in your street clothes. That's more than okay with me. I'm like, yay. He was a great DJ. Everybody loved working with him. He was sincerely nice. He sincerely cared. And when you talk to so many people and you see so much sincerity versus insincerity, you kind of get to know the difference. So yeah, he was awesome and he was totally gung-ho about it. And then he asks me, he's like, hey, you know, the crowd's been kind of dead. We really need someone to kind of get them going. Would you mind going on first? Okay, yeah, sure, man. Dancing away your troubles is real effective. I went up there and I stomped around like a weirdly sexy, aggressive bitch to Rage Against the Machine Bulls on Parade. And the crowd responded. So I get off stage, I go past the bar to uh, go get dressed into my costume costume and yada yada yada. And there's the bartender and he's going like this. That's why we love the Barnett. The staff were really, really cool. And the crowd responded well to my uh, costume thing as well. I continued with another Rage Against the Machine song, I believe, and then something else. The crowd seemed to dig it. I didn't win. The rookie won. And a year, maybe two later, when the Asians that I'd become friends with and I were talking about uh, rookie contests, he told me which ones were not rigged. Some of them were, some of them were not. So in some of them, they actually went by what the audience filled out on these little paper things and yada yada yada, or whatever. He did not mention that club as being one that's not rigged. When I finally put two and two together, I realized often <laughs> they will give the win at a rigged contest to the rookie because that rookie will then get the confidence and they'll want to actually do it again and then they can get another dancer out of it. So they made a decision for the business. It didn't matter that there was a difference of $60 in what one would take home. Now they made a decision for the business. On a brighter note, some club managers were actually really fantastic and it was really, really difficult to get raises sometimes. Um, one of the ways to get raises was to get promo. Now, if you went through the photographer that the agency very strongly recommended, you would, in the end, spend at least two grand. And you could only order the posters in a batch of like a thousand. <laughs> I was retired for like two years and I still had fucking posters. Oh my god. <laughs> and even though I got the promo from the guy that was supposed to basically assure me that I would get a raise for having the promo, 
I still had to fight to get my fucking raise. It's funny because the last raise that I got, it didn't really come from the agency, so to speak. It's just the club managers just started deciding that I should get more money. One of them was very funny because he had uh, somewhat recently taken over. He had been a DJ for a long time at the Fox. I can't remember how long it was in between when the old club manager left and when he became club manager or entertainment manager. I think it was entertainment manager. Either way, he was in charge of giving us our pay, talking to the agency, the booking, da 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 da. And one week I go to the DJ booth to get my pay and I kind of open it up and I look at it and he's working. He's in, in the booth doing his thing. I'm like, hey man. Um. Is this right? He kind of takes a glance at it and goes, oh yeah, yeah. He's giving me a $5 show price raise. <laughs> he was so nonchalant about it. I was like, hey dude, thanks. Yeah, yeah, no problem. You deserve it. Whatever. So fucking nonchalant. <laughs> What's great? Another club manager, um, and Nanaimo really, really, really appreciated me and Jen. He saw that we both put on a good show, tried to put in the energy, tried to switch up the costumes, you know, put in effort, showed up on time, we're reliable, da 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 da. And at the end of our week, he's like, you know, seriously, this is how much you're gonna be getting. And you can come back once a month. Just call me. Unfortunately, we didn't really book with that agency much. And when we did try to get back in, they gave us the runaround. So we didn't end up going back as often as we could. I mean, I guess we could have tried to go behind their backs, but it just seemed like bad business. Well, I think Jen continued booking with them for a couple clubs on the island at some point um, after I'd left. But I, I was just done with them. I'm like, fuck this. The club manager wants us and you want to send us to where? Aunties? Where there's holes in the stage and fuck I hate that place? You want to you, you wanna send me there? And now you're telling me we can't book together? What? Is, what? No. I'm going back to my main agency that loves the fact that we book together. And this is what one of the agents said actually was, oh yeah, no problem. Look, bam, two spots filled. Easy. <laughs> so some of the agents appreciated that. And it really made things so much easier in so many ways because it's it's really easy to just lose your fucking mind. These clubs, these clubs, these clubs, and whatever. <laughs> I honestly can't recall. Um, 